Hi, so this is the ongoing saga of the Newtone 2500 stereo receiver rebuild. Uh, I think this is part five in the video series. The last time we left off, I was finishing up rebuilding the individual boards and the power supply board, and I got the unit back up and working. We had a little bit of an amplifier issue for the A channel, which I sorted out and solved. That Put the unit back into basically working order except for a few things i sort of have it it's not fully reassembled yet the chassis is still in pieces but i've got it sort of set up here so i can work on it and the problem that i encountered has to do with the tuner so let me turn it up and first show you the fm And the way I have this set up is off camera, I have two 8 inch uh, speakers from this system for testing purposes. And you can see here that we're receiving an FM stereo. Uh, this is a stereo indicator light that would show through the dial. Here's the dial for it. This would will mount back on the chassis when I'm all done. And here we have the FM stereo label and this is the light that shows up through here. I have this off so I can show you other things that I have to work on. The FM stereo is very good. The reception is good. The stereo separation is good. I'm very happy with the FM generally, uh, but the problem I encountered has to do with the AM. And one of the things I found out after starting on this set when I was talking to its owner was that sometime in the past, uh, years ago, he had a lightning, perhaps a lightning strike or a lightning event at his house. And when that happened, there was a lot of problems right after that with the tuner on the 2500. The AM, it was primarily a problem with the AM portion of the tuner. He described things like he was receiving shortwave bands on the AM and the tuning scale was way off, which I also found that when I was working on it, uh, the, where the, the scale is the alignment between the pointer and the numbers on the scale, and it was way off also. So in working on that, what I discovered was, I'm gonna switch it over to AM. So this, this station is approximately 860 or so on the AM dial and the pointer is off a little bit but not too bad. That's something that's not too difficult to solve. But the bigger problem is that if we go down the scale towards the low end, we have virtually no reception. I can go all the way down and there's nothing there. And for this area, down here at 680, 680 is one of the stronger AM stations in this area. We're not in a really terrific area for AM reception in general and I don't cheat by having a super expensive or super sophisticated antenna. This is just simply hooked up on the same type of antenna it would have had in the customer's home because fair is fair and we don't want to, uh, we don't want to cheat the odds in our favor. But I'm just not getting anything. So in doing a lot of troubleshooting, this is the AM tuner board right in here. And these little red wires, these are just been soldered on for testing purposes because it's a lot simpler when you're doing a lot of circuit board testing to solder wires to individual traces to make the connections easier to deal with. And here's what I found. If I do this, I mean, there, there could be, you know, a mid-round pick maybe, maybe, but I think... And, That's 680. And look, if I take I my finger away... Definitely it disappears. Now I've attempted to do an AM tuner alignment on this set and the tuner alignment procedure doesn't really work out the way it's supposed to and I've done these before 
and while it's very difficult to make an absolute statement about what the problem is, I believe that I've narrowed it down to the point that there's a problem with the variable capacitor, also sometimes referred to as the variable condenser. And let me show you this. Turn this down. So this is a replacement AM board that I was able to source from my friend Bob who happened to have one in stock and he thinks that it's good although he's not sure because it's probably been sitting in his back room at his shop for he said could be 30 years not sure but he thinks that it's good um, so we're going to find out this portion is the variable capacitor or variable condenser and it has the fins that interfold it's a little hard to turn this one they interfold and this is what does the AM tuning and when I touch this point right here on the board it's essentially making a change in this center section and then I'm able to receive stations below on the lower end of the AM band so it's a little hard to say because tuners are somewhat more art than science but I believe that there's a problem with the variable capacitor on the original board it could be something that happened because of age. It could be something that happened because of the lightning. It's really difficult to say. I can't find anything else wrong on the board. All of the transistors, which there's only three or four, I believe, they're all okay. There are very few diodes. I think there's only three. And the coils all and the um, transformers, which are in these cans, they all seem to be all right also. So it doesn't leave a lot else to go wrong. So it could be this. This is essentially the tuner board. Without this, you have nothing. One of the problems with tuners are, when this board was designed, a lot of these parts are very specific to this board. This tuning capacitor, coils, transformers, these are not parts that are easily substituted. Not only that, but easy to find in today's world. You know, this was designed more than 40 years ago, so coming up with this is difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out his original board for this board, put it all back together, and see what we have. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I'm back. So just a little bit of time has passed. Fortunately, swapping out the tuner board is not very difficult. Uh, there are just four wires that connect it to the rest of the receiver. And the diciest part is you have to deal with the pulley and the dial core that goes here and here and down here and all that. So if you're really, really careful, you don't let the cord fall off, pull, fall off the pulley because if you do, then it's a major effort to get it all lined back up right. Anyway, uh, it went well. It only took a few minutes to swap out the board, and now let me turn it up. You're not always going to fire your A effort. I, I figured they would play. And down there the we have 680, uh, but, which you know, is the, 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 the KMBR Sports yeah, everybody Station. Everybody play big at the and I think and if we go Warriors up. Significant weight loss. Why? While you're fasting. That's probably 740. Fasting. Eight. The guys have got the 510. Yeah. And that's KGO, that's 810. KGO is, uh, you know, I think it's a 200,000 watt that that AM said. channel. I'm pretty sure that if you tried really hard, you probably could get it on Mars. So this solves our AM tuner problem. I, the last thing I have to do is I have to get the pointer lined up on the dial correctly because we're still off somewhat. If we hold this up here, we're right here and we should be up here a little more. So I've got to play around with that and see if I can get that straightened out. Other than that, we're in pretty good shape. It uh, looks like this will get put back together. I still have the 2510 intercom control unit to finish up. And then I get the uh, enjoyable task of wiring it all together, which there's a lot of interconnect wires to set it all up to make sure it all functions correctly. But this was a good hurdle. I owe Bob a thanks for finding the tuner board that we needed for it. And uh, when I get the chassis all put back together, get the pointer aligned, and this is, unit is done, the next part should have to do with the 2510 and then final testing. So I'll be back in a while.